Amen. 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 Wherever you are, wherever you are, just say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And just give the Lord praise. Amen. Amen. We thank Sister Jackie and Brother and Sister Gibson and Sister Jay for leading us in our worship. We thank God for all those that are here in the sanctuary and for those who are watching online. We give God thanksgiving and praise. Let's go before the throne of grace. Everlasting God, we thank you so much that in the time of trouble, you keep us, you hide us close to you in your tabernacle, in your presence, in your bosom. And we thank you, Lord, for this. Everybody doesn't realize just how good this thing is. We pray, oh God, that they will have eyes to see and ears to hear, oh Lord. That thou art the same yesterday, today, and forever. And throughout the ages and the various segments of time, when trouble prevailed and harm and death and danger and confusion, you still continue to be a deliverer now as you did then. I ask, oh God, that you will allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts to be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say, Amen. Just for a few moments, for a few moments, I want to talk about waiting on a breakthrough. Everybody is waiting on a breakthrough. If you're waiting on a breakthrough, a breakthrough won't you wave your hands? Amen, amen. We need a breakthrough. Sister Gibson read the Old Testament text from Job, the second chapter. Let me read the New Testament text as it is uh, in the English Standard Version. John the fifth chapter, verse six through nine, hear the words of the Lord. Jesus said unto him, do you want to be healed? The sick man answered, sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred. While I am going, another steps down before me. And Jesus said to him, get up, take up your bed. And y'all know what he said, and walk. And once the man was healed, he took up his bed and he walked. I want to give you some good news. Here's the good news. It is a great privilege and a blessing to know the grace and the power of God in our lives as we surrender ourselves to him and trust him and his son, Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. The good news today is that it is a great privilege, and I'm also at honor and blessing to know the grace and power of God in our lives when we give our lives to God through Jesus Christ. And we follow the ways of Jesus for he is the way. And we learn the truths taught by Jesus because he is the truth. And we live the life made possible for us by Jesus Christ because he is the life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And when we acknowledge that and we accept it in our lives and we live by it, we will experience, we are experiencing a great and awesome privilege from God in the midst of everything that we're going on. Because of the life and death of Jesus Christ, we are able to live well in this world because all that we need, everything that we need 
is found. Every answer that we need is found in Jesus Christ. I believe it was Andre Kraus that says, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there is no other, no matter what men might say. And through the years of just living, I've come to know that that truth, that reality, rooted in the words of God, lyriced by Andre Crouch, is the truth. Now, the reality for all of us is that when you think about all of the problems and the issues dealing with work, family, life, health, finances, all of the issues that we dealt with before uh, March 220, and then you add to all of that what we are going through now in this world of darkness, when you add all of that to it, it's easy to understand why people will wonder and ask the question, God, what's going on? People are waiting for a breakthrough, waiting for a breakthrough that they needed before this pandemic and revolution and political turmoil and they need a solution and an answer right now and they're calling on God. We are calling on God for an answer to help us. And this comes from out of our concern and our frustration and all of this stuff that's just going on. That's just a problem. And so we find ourselves asking God, why is this happening? And Father God, how long do we have to go through that? Have any of you experienced that? God, why is this happening to us? How, how long do we have to, to deal with this? And people all around, whether they admit it or not, in their mind, in their spirit, most folk are asking those questions, why and how long? I read somewhere just the other day about a lady who had been praying for healing. She'd been sick for over 20 years and been asking God to heal her. In fact, she said she's been praying for healing more than half of her life. And she was so frustrated that sometimes she was wondering, should I keep on praying? Do I need to keep on praying? Is God really going to answer my prayer? That's what she said. She needs a breakthrough. Personally, I keep thinking about my son and his wife and the baby that they're, that's it's due to be born in, in the next few days. Bringing a baby into this world of chaos where this future is uncertain and all of the problems that are going on. Can you imagine mothers all around the world, especially in the United States, who perhaps don't have all of the connections and, and, and the support in their lives, bringing a child in this world that seems like a hopeless thing to do, and they need prayer. They're waiting for an answer. They are waiting for a breakthrough. And then we must not forget students who have planned to go to school and get an education and the school is automatically shut down and now they can't go to the dorms and they've got to do study online. I know of students who have put their money and their plans to go and stay in a dormitory and the dormitory is not going to open and now they got to go back hundreds of miles back home and have nowhere to stay. They need a breakthrough. And then we must consider the people who live under roofs and the people who live under the stars who are struggling to survive, need a meal, need somewhere to clean, somewhere to go to the bathroom. They need a breakthrough. They're looking for solutions. Some folk are boxed in, can't go nowhere, can't do anything. Lord. I need a breakthrough. When can I get this breakthrough? And how will it come? 
Well, I want to suggest that from the two passages of Scripture today, the passage that Sister uh, Nancy read from uh, Job and the passage that I read from John, I want to suggest to you that there are some insights to help us understand what it means for God to give us the breakthrough we need. In our Old Testament text, we find Job, and everybody, all of us know the story of Job. Job is in a situation reminiscent to what many people are experiencing right now. Job was a man who lived rightly before God and he had confidence in God and God had confidence in him. And then out of nowhere, out of nowhere, Job found himself in a situation where his family, his health, and his wealth were gone. Being a man of faith, he was determined not to curse God and die. But instead, he said, I'll wait on the Lord until my change comes. I don't know why I'm out here on the ash piles, but I think I'll wait on the Lord until my change comes. He was waiting on that breakthrough. He was waiting on that breakthrough from God that would at least give him some understanding as to why this happened to him. His question wasn't so much how it happened, but Job's question was why it happened. What have I done? In fact, I've done no wrong. I lived for you, God. Why has this happened to me? How many folk you know? How many times have you experienced all kinds of crazy things happening in your life and you ask the question, why is this going on? I didn't do anything to deserve this. Why is it happening? Well, his friends came along. His friends came along and they called themselves sitting down trying to help him out. <clears throat> and the first day they sat there and they were quiet because they knew that Job was really in a messed up situation. But then when you continue to read on, they began to open their mouths. And the more they opened their mouths, the more mm, the ignorance really appeared. Pontificating, trying to figure out what God was doing. And then also then saying, well, Job, you're probably in trouble because of something you did. You're just getting what you deserve. You ever notice that when something happens to you, whether it's for the right reason or the wrong reason, somebody will say, mm-hmm, I knew you was going to get what you deserved. And that's what happened to Job. And so Job is struggling <clears throat> to find out why this dastardly thing happened to him. But let's move down to around the 40th chapter, the 41st chapter. He begins to question God as to why. And then God called him out. And God put him in a place where he began to ask Job questions that he could not really answer. I want us to be careful, myself included. We must protect ourselves from conversations and from the media and the news outlets who put spins on everything in order to make money and keep you coming back for more. They will tell you anything. And some of it is true, and some of it is not true. And then we've got to be careful. We've got to be careful. The Lord put this in my spirit today. We've got to really be careful for people who offer spiritual information whether it is me or other clergy or people just think they know something. 
And we've got to be careful and ask God to give us discernment. And you can't get discernment unless you spend time with God for yourself. And when you get discernment from God and you're asking why is this pandemic here and why is this, uh, this, this, this political turmoil is here and, and why is there so much racial tension and why is there revolution and why have we gone through all of this trouble for all of these decades? Why, 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 why? Only God knows. And God speaks to all of us. But sometimes he's speaking only to us to help us to understand. And we can share our ideas and our thoughts and we can share them back and forth. But unless we have discernment from God, we don't want to be like Job listening to all of the stuff that his friend said that proved to be wrong when God had a conversation with Job. You want a breakthrough? Don't be quick to listen to the world. Be discerning to who you listen to. And spend time listening to God and seeking God. And God will speak to your heart and mind. And the reason why I know it is because the word says, and he will grant you his peace. And I've come to know the peace. And many of you here in the audience have come to know the peace. Many of you who are watching via Zoom, you know the peace of God. And for those that don't know the peace of God, I want you to understand you need to spend some time with the Lord in prayer and silence, reading the word. And just saying, Lord, I am an empty vessel waiting for you to just pour yourself into me so I will understand why. A lot of times, when we get the answer, it's not the answer that we want. It's not the answer that we expected. It's not the answer that we like. But here's the good news. Any answer that you get from God through Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit or however God gives it to you is the best answer for you because nobody else in the world can touch that. Let's talk about the how. In our New Testament text, here's a man who's been sitting at the pool for 38 years. And the thing about the pool is that every now and then they believed that the angel of the Lord stirred the water. And when they stirred the water, if you got in the water real quick, you would be healed because the angel's power was right there. And this man's story is that for 38 years he's been sitting there and when he would try to get in the pool, somebody else would jump in front of him. Now remember, as 38 years pass by, he's getting older and older, and he probably can't move as quick as he wanted to. Plus, he was still a lame man. But he did try, the Bible says. When I tried to get in there, someone else jumped in front of me. And then Jesus comes along. Talking about the how. And Jesus says to him, do you want to be healed? He says, yeah, but I can't get into the water, you know? And Jesus said, take up your bed and walk. And when he did that, he was healed and he got up and he went about his business. How? When I was thinking about this, this man was there for 38 years. He'd been at that pool longer than Jesus was living. Because right? Jesus had to be about 31 or 32 by the time he got there. And this man spent his whole life there. And then Jesus finally shows up. 
He may not come. How many of you know this? He may not come when you want him. But what? He's always on, right on time. He's right on time. And he showed up. He showed up before he went to Calvary. He showed up. The man had the faith to believe, but he just couldn't do nothing. But he hung in there and Jesus showed up. The Lord will always show up and he will deliver. We ask the question, why? Well, we understand that we just got to wait on God and keep our mouth shut, say the right thing, and trust God so he don't give us a whooping like he gave Job. Because God has got our back no matter what. But the how, how long, how long, it doesn't matter how long. Songwriter said, I'm going to trust in the Lord until I what? Die. And as long as we trust in the Lord, he's going to come through. Our breakthrough will come through. I believe that there's a breakthrough for America. No matter what the outcome is, I believe that there is a breakthrough in America. And some of you already know that I believe that all of these babies that are born during COVID-19 will rise up to be the generation that God will use to heal this nation. And right now what these babies need are men and women that will mentor them for the next 20 years so that when they step into leadership in this nation, they will be working under the unction and the power of God. And the same way we classify people and generations, we will classify and, and identify these young Young people as the people of God the beloved community the first generation of the beloved community the people of God that stand up for righteousness and justice and truth in the name of Jesus I believe that America's got its breakthrough it's coming we don't know when <laughs> we don't know how long but we know it's coming. My brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for the people of God. Won't you unmute and say, thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. And so now we're going to take and have a moment of reflection and response. As Minister Jackie plays, I want you to take time to pray and think and, and, and on this message or anything that you heard that blessed you tonight and if you want to contact me you want me to pray for you or pray with you you can send me a private chat expressing what you desire and I will respond or you can email me at pastor at jacobswellmemphis.org Just think about the goodness of the Lord for a few moments. 